How many in here, by a show of hands, have Cruise Pilot on their combine? Whether it be yellow or green. I bet a lot of you have it in here, almost everybody. Um, how many use it? Or how many don't use it? Why don't you use it? It works really well. And we'll talk about some of the tips on Cruise Pilot and how Cruise Pilot relates to CMOS Auto. C Cruise Pilot, for those that are trying to run CMOS Auto and can't get CMOS Auto to work as well as they would like for it to, you, if you're the ones that aren't using Cruise Pilot, it probably isn't going to because it relies heavily on the Cruise Pilot sensors in order to make its changes. So let's go and switch gears here. So like I said, I'm not gonna go through all of this. Um, uh, we're just gonna hit the high points here. Um, but on, on Cruise Pilot, so I'm using the screenshots from, uh, from the, the green combines, but uh, the, it's, it's the, the way, way we navigate through it is a little similar on the yellow ones. I mean, there's not a whole lot of steps here on Cruise Pilot. First, you turn it on. And, uh, and once you have it on, you need to decide which strategy you're gonna use. Now you've got three strategies that you, can, uh, that you can select from. You have cruise control, which is great um, when everything is nice and consistent out there. You're harvesting corn. Um, you might be wanting to push the combine harder or try to get more throughput out of it than the pressure roller and the feeder house will allow because you can actually limit that roller out that roller that runs across the feeder house halfway up between the chains. Um, if you get a lot of, if you get some really high volume crop in there, you might push it to its limits and it's not gonna let you go any faster. So to override that, we can switch to cruise control and override that. But there's some things you can do also to make sure that you don't limit that out so soon um, or keep it uh, consistent with the crops that you're harvesting in. The second one is called constant throughput. And then the third one is max throughput, and that's the one that takes into consideration grain loss. This is the one that I, that's, you're supposed to use when you're running just cruise pilot without CMOS. Because cruise pilot will use, when it, in this mode right here, will adjust your ground speed to maintain your constant throughput, that bushels per hour that you've got it indexed up to, while also looking at your grain loss. So it may slow, not only slow down to keep you within, within your throughput limit that you've set, but also to keep grain loss to it in an acceptable level. So that is for cruise pilot only, and this is where some of the confusion comes in when, uh, se when running CMOS Auto. CMOS Auto uses constant throughput. Now the reason we don't want max throughput with grain loss on CMOS, can anybody, anybody tell me why I would not want this one for CMOS? For you guys running CMOS. Because CMOS's job, especially auto separate and auto clean, is to minimize grain loss also. So if I have cruise pilot trying to minimize grain loss by slowing the combine down, that's gonna be counter to what CMOS wants to do, maybe with its rotors and fan speed and sieve position. So there's some antagonism that can take place. They'll start fighting each other, and what happens when that t does happen is your combine starts to get lethargic. It just kind of slows down, and you just can't get it to respond as quickly as you want to because it's, it's, you got the two systems fighting each other. So that's one of the first questions I oftentimes get. Where should I set my strategy for CMOS Auto or on Cruise Pilot when I'm running CMOS Auto? Well, that's constant throughput. So recommended for use when using full CMOS Auto. And then when you're just wanting to run Cruise Pilot by itself on the most adaptive mode or strategy, that is your maximum throughput with grain loss sensing. So make sure you select that. Now, if you're just wanting to stroll or harvest through the field uh, at a constant speed or want to, you wanna be able to adjust that speed um, from the joystick, then you can, using the trigger on the backside, then you can just select cruise control. Usually cruise control is probably best when we're harvesting really dry crop and uh, everything is nice and consistent, not a whole lot of variability out there, then you can use either one of them. So that's the, 
That was one of the first questions we always get is which strategy do we use? Well, for CMOS, and that's constant throughput. And that'll make sure you get, that, that it's gonna maintain your throughput uh, uh, versus uh, slowing the combine down when it does start to experience some grain loss. Let's, let, the, let CMOS take care of the grain loss. Now the next one, <clears throat> we get some questions on this also on zeroing the throughput. Remember, you do this twice. Why do you do it twice on Cruise Pilot? You've got the zero cal, and then you've got another calibration. So there's two calibrations you have to do for Cruise Pilot. The zero cal is when you're just sitting out in the lot with the header on and combines at max no load. So it's just sitting there, all processor and feeder house engaged, no crop going in. Then I go down and I just learn, go to the very bottom where it says zero throughput and I hit the, hit the bar and calibrate for zero flow. Then once I get into the field, I will do it one more time. Say so you get about 50, 60 yards in the field, get the combine full and then push and hold your automatic button, which is also the autopilot button on the joystick, push and hold that for three seconds until it beeps and then it calibrates that roller to full flow. So now it has a range to operate in. If you only do it the zero cal at the beginning of harvest before you go in the field, it's not really gonna know where to, what to feed back to the combine accurately. So you need to make sure that you do that period, periodically throughout the day, not just once, because the field conditions are gonna change. The crop density will change throughout the day as it warms up, as the dew starts to settle in the evening. So I always recommend, I mean, you can't do it too much, really. Um, do it in the morning. Do it if you know a variety changed at any time. Do it at noon when the sun is up at 12 o'clock. Do it in the afternoon when it's the hottest. Do it in the evening when the sun starts to set and the dew starts to come back out. Anytime you see, have that physical change taking place out in the field that it affects density, just hit it, and uh, there's no downside to doing that. So just when you think of it, just push on the button for three seconds. You're not slowing the combine down, and that will keep that, cal that pressure roller calibrated to those conditions that you're harvesting in. So that's one that sometimes gets forgotten about too. It's amazing when you get in there and you just do that simple calibration, and boom, it takes right off, and that was all it took. So, so a couple other ones on here. Um, your target speed, that's only when you're running, uh, running your, uh, your constant speed or your cruise control mode. Um, so you, you'll set that one. The other one next to it is grayed out when you, when you have it on the cruise control mode. This one is the one that you set for when you're running either one of the throughput strategies. So that's where you'll set your target speed. Say you put it at, I don't know, five miles an hour. Whatever you're comfortable with it running, that's what you'll put in there. This one, this is the end, this is the, the uh, throughput number. Now, this number to, to, in the morning, this is kind of an arbitrary number, it's an index number. So whatever, the, when you start in the next day, you'll have the previous day's number in there. That's probably not the number you want to have in there. So, um, so we'll, how, that, how that number gets automatically set is when you do that, that uh, when you do your, uh, th learn your, your throughput out in the field and you push and hold your autopilot button for three seconds. That will automatically adjust that number to the throughput that you're in. Its range is from 10 to 150. I usually start at about 60 to 70. If you're looking for a starting point, about 60 to 70 is a good place for both corn and soybeans. And you'll notice that when you're out there harvesting and you hit that button, it's probably gonna come some, fall somewhere within that range. It might be 40, it might fall outside of it a little bit, maybe 57 or something. But for the most part, it's gonna fall somewhere between 60 and 70. Uh, so if you do want to have a starting point, go ahead and enter that number in there, somewhere between 60 or 70. But know that when you do push and calibrate that in, on the fly, that that number will probably change. So, and Sometimes what'll happen is when I do hit that, make that calibration, it might slow your combine down. So if you've got it set at five miles an hour and you do that zero cal, fun or the, not the zero cal, but the on the fly calibration, you might notice it go to maybe 4.6 miles an hour. 
So that was a little bit different condition that it was in. Maybe if you calibrate it one more time, try it one more time, it might bring it back up. If it doesn't bring it back up, then all you have to do is just tap on the, uh, um, go back into automatic and tap on your circle right there and bump it up. Usually bump it up in five to 10 increments. Don't take it way up in like 30 increments. Don't set too lofty of a goal for cruise pilot because sometimes you might be driving along, you'll feel it surge. The yellow ones did this, sometimes on the green ones it'll do that. And what it's trying to do is it sees that you've set your throughput way high and it's trying to work its way to that also and it can't get there and it's sitting there trying to get there. It's like rocking back and forth, it just can't get there. So, so don't set too lofty of a goal. So that's why I usually work in five or 10 increments. Uh, so, so if you adjust it from 60 to 65, hit okay. There you might see it go right back from 4.5 back to five miles an hour. And if you want it to go a little bit faster, say take it to five and a half, maybe adjust it up to 70 or 75 or whatever it takes to get it up to that speed. And sometimes all it is is just recalibrating it again. So, but uh, that was another question that we get asked. This one, this one's pretty easy. Wherever you want the combine to stop at, cruise pilot to stop at, if you don't want it to go over 100% engine load, you can, you can put, set a limit right there for your engine load. Anywhere from 95 to 102, 104%, it's whatever, whatever you want to set at. Now, if you notice that the combine, when you take off in the field and you hit the autopilot button and engage everything, and it's just not getting there, it's just really slow to respond, bump it up to aggressive or very aggressive. Uh, medium, medium sensitivity, so when you tap on the sensitivity, you'll get uh, medium is where it always defaults to. I don't go to very gentle or gentle. It'll take forever to get to five miles an hour if that's the speed you've got set. Very aggressive is patterned after a human operator. So if, if that's any indication as to where you'd like to have it set, sometimes this startles folks because when the combine takes off that quickly and you're not the one with your hand on the joystick, that can startle some operators. So if that's the case, start it aggressive, but I try to get, my, get, the, get operators up to aggressive pretty quick because that allows the combine to accelerate at a, at a normal pace up to that, those, those targets that you have set for it. Down here, if it's on gentle or very gentle, it's just gonna be very, very slow to respond. And some operators may not know why that is. And uh, it's usually because the sensitivity is set too low. So might be something with the throughput. The throughput may not be set. That could also be doing it. It may be too low of a throughput number and it reached it and it's not gonna let you get to your, your ground speed. So you wanna make sure you get your throughput number up there and calibrated and then make sure that you, uh, once you get comfortable, I would try to get it up to at least aggressive pretty quick. And that makes things speed up a lot and respond a lot quicker out in the field. Um, unloading mode, okay, this, this is another one that sometimes we get questions on. So, unloading mode is, when, it's, when you tap on that unloading mode, number three, you'll get two options, off, or emptying. When it's off, cruise pilot will remain at that constant harvest speed while unloading. So it will not adjust. Uh, so that's one that we recommend for those that don't wanna have the combine slow down 15%. So it's trying to conserve some power if necessary. Uh, so on the emptying mode, the ground, the ground speed will slow down 15%. You just have to make sure the auger cart driver is aware of that, which is sometimes hard because they don't know when the combine's gonna slow down 15%. If you're, at, if you're at four miles an hour, you're gonna slow down to like three and a half or so, and uh, three, 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 six, and he might run out from underneath the unloading tube. So we'll make sure that you, they're aware of that. Um, it's good to use this with you, when you're in really tough conditions that you're uncertain about. And uh, so that's the big difference between the two of them. This one maintains constant speed while unloading. Basically, cruise pilot shuts off while you're unloading. And then emptying, it will slow down also to 15%. And it won't modulate after that either. You know, those that use it have a, have a lot of great things to say about it. I mean, we've got customers saying they gain 15% productivity or acres per hour just by going off a cruise pilot. So that's a really, really good tool. And it really makes CMOS Auto 
a uh, much more effective system also.